Whether you're sitting or standing, don't be a slouch. Bad posture can cause tons of problems, from injury to chronic pain and fatigue. But good posture helps build core strength and will keep you stronger as you age. Not only that, but carry yourself properly. Head held high, shoulders back, stomach in. Makes a great first impression and gives you confidence. It'll give you the upper hand professionally and personally and keep you being beautiful inside and out. Hi, I'm Dr. Mehmet Oz. And I'm Dr. Mike Royzen. We're the UDOCs. Body shape. Prehistoric men and women had to make decisions about how and with whom they were going to make, and they did it in microseconds. They didn't get those messages from the media. There were no ads on rocks and no fashion shoots with buffalo hides. They had to make the ultimate reproductive decision based on a novel concept, each other. And the primary visual cue was the waist to hip ratio. To measure it, wrap a tape measure around your waist while sucking in. You're going to anyway. Now measure your hips at the widest point around the buttocks. Then divide the waist size by the hip size. For women, the ideal waist to hip ratio is about 0.7, while ideally men have the same size waist and hips. So you may be asking, what's the big deal over a few decimal points? On the surface, there isn't. Or is there? Studies actually show that waist-to-hip ratio is a very reliable signal of reproductive age, reproductive potential, and potential for disease. The closer your body is to the ideal measurements, the closer it is to the ideal for childbearing. Now why is this? One of the reasons is the omentum. Take a look at this animation and I'll show you why. As we close in on the belly, that yellow pad that we just lost was the omentum. Now, there's the liver in the upper left-hand part of the image. The green thing is the gallbladder, and that food is leaving your stomach, going into the first part of your small bowel. And when it enters into the small bowel, it mixes with green bile. Like, like any other soap, it'll break it down into small particles, and those particles of food nutrients will go across the wall into the big vein called the portal vein that feeds the liver. If the food that you're eating is good for you, your liver loves it. It changes it around and makes it what you need for your body. But the food food's not good for you, it makes your liver fat. You watch, see it turn white? You basically have a foie gras, a fatty liver. Now, let's go back to the omentum. Sounds like momentum without the M. There it is, that yellow pad is now beginning to get larger. As you eat more and more of the wrong kinds of food and too much of it, you get that big belly that makes us worried about your waist size. Many of you are asking how you can control your omentum. Our four main primal drives for food, water, sex, and sleep exist in your brain's satiety center. Your brain and bodies need those elements to prevent our body chemistry from spinning out of control like a hydroplaning vehicle. Now, interesting things about these drives is that they all rely on each other a bit. When one drive isn't being satisfied, your body makes up for it by relying on others. If you're not getting enough sleep, for example, then you may compensate for that lack of fulfillment with an out-of-control sausage binge. In fact, that's one of the main reasons why people overeat. They're not getting enough sleep, they're not getting enough sex, and they're not drinking enough water. Now let's turn to muscle. Not only does it make you look more vital, but we also need muscle to serve as a metabolic machine that burns calories. Now remember, your body burns 50 to 100 calories per pound of muscle every day compared to less than one handful of calories per pound of fat. The best way to optimize your muscle is to aim for 12 repetitions. So don't add too much weight too quickly. In addition, you can help get that elongated look by stretching your muscles through yoga. Make sure that you train to exhaustion so you can really struggle with the last few repetitions. Achieve this goal with either higher weights or lifting them slower so that your muscles are really taxed by the exercises and get the message to build themselves up in preparation for the next battle. Fight fat with fiber, like in 100% whole grain carbohydrates, oatmeal, fruits and vegetables. It's also smart to eat a little healthy fat 30 minutes before meals, like a handful of nuts to allow the satiety signal to go from your brain to your stomach and back again so you avoid overeating. You want to get calcified. You already know that calcium is good for your bones, but a thousand milligrams a day of calcium helps to re both reduce your fat intake and increases fat metabolism, a double whammy in the world of weight loss. You can get the calcium through the usual suspects like low-fat dairy products or supplements, but don't rule out the stealth sources either, like spinach and beans and sesame seeds and even oranges. Search for hidden causes of weight gain. 
If you're gaining weight no matter what you do, check these hormones. Low thyroid function slows down your metabolism so you can't burn the calories the way you used to. Polycystic ovarian disease called PCOS creates metabolic chaos with your sex hormones. Testosterone levels can fall as we age, so you lose muscle mass and burn less calories. Your growth hormones usually decrease with age, and the best ways to sustain it are sleep and exercise. So now you know the importance of the waist to hip ratio and how to nudge the biology of blubber in the right direction to minimize your momentum.